A significant rise in top GCSE results as teachers decide the grades. And in the world's largest refugee settlement, an aid worker from Monmouthshire describes the immense challenges faced by coronavirus. Pnhaun Dar, good afternoon. Pupils across Wales have been collecting their GCSE results this morning, with grades significantly up on last year. Almost three quarters of the awarded grades were between A star and C. It follows a decision to base the marking on teachers' assessments after there was uproar at the downgrading of A-level results last week. Here's our education and family correspondent, Beth Ann Lewis. The class of 2020. Their schools were closed, their exams cancelled, and then a huge political row about their grades. But on results day in Cavathfa High School in Merthyr, there were still the usual nerves. I'm delighted with my results. I've had A's and everything. I'm just so happy and I wish all my friends the best of luck. I know many people who thought that they wouldn't get any, any anywhere near what they deserved in their results, but I'm glad that we've had a change in the results today. In Prestat in High too, relief or disappointment when they saw their grades. I didn't think I was going to do as well as I have, so I'm just so overwhelmed. In shock that we haven't done exams and it's, it just feels all of it soon in a way, but like it's taken forever to get here at the same time. At the start of this week, a process which was supposed to make grades more consistent, but which many claimed had downgraded results unfairly, was ditched in favour of the original grades submitted by teachers. It meant overall results have gone up significantly. After a turbulent week, the Education Minister congratulated pupils at Stanwell School in the Vale of Glamorgan. Education ministers and administrations right the way across the UK uh, did their very best working with regulators and others to put in place a system so that children could get a grade uh, and an award this summer. I think it would have been un unimaginable. It's not the fault of the young people that they couldn't sit their exams, that we weren't able to give them a qualification that would allow them to move on to their next steps. This results day was always going to feel different after exams were cancelled and happening in the middle of a pandemic. At this school, they emailed results to pupils and now they've come in to register for sixth form. The build-up heightened the uncertainty, but they think the right decision was made in the end. Today, our GCSE results reflect the work that our students have put in, our teachers have put in, and I think is a fair representation of what we've done. Our results are very good, but they're not hugely inflated from previous years. A-level and AS grades have also been upgraded. Some BTEC pupils still haven't had their results, and these GCSE students say it's been a difficult time. I really thought I wasn't going to be able to achieve what I had today, but it's really come through and I'm so happy with my results. It's a stressful time for us, and, you know, I just don't really know how to feel about it. It's still a lot to take in. Plenty of success for the pupils, but now there'll be an independent review to find out what went wrong with the process. Beth Ann Lewis reporting there. A public inquiry should be called into the way the pandemic's been handled by the government, according to a campaign group. Lee Morgan-Jones is part of COVID-bereaved Families for Justice. Her father died with coronavirus at Newport's Royal Gwent Hospital in April. She says there should be scrutiny of the advice given by NHS 111. The Welsh Ambulance Service, which runs 111, says it welcomes all feedback. It's about learning and getting an evidence base from what we now know to enable us to care for people far better and to save lives for a second, third, fourth, whatever wave that might be. Meanwhile, both the Welsh and UK government say there should be an inquiry, but not at the moment. Working in one of the most densely populated places on Earth during a global pandemic brings many challenges and risks. Alex Detaney, who's from Monmouthshire, is an aid worker with the United Nations World Food Programme at the Rohingya Refugee Settlement in southern Bangladesh. Alex contracted COVID and recovered, but says social distancing is extremely difficult to implement. He's been talking to our reporter, Matt Murray. 
It is the largest refugee settlement in the world. Nearly one million people live here. The Rohingya refugee settlement in Cox's Bazaar in southern Bangladesh is an ideal breeding ground for a coronavirus, which thrives in crowded areas with poor sanitation and where social distancing is almost impossible. Living here, the risks are many. Alex Detaini from Abergavenny works with the United Nations Food Programme. Alex tries to minimise those risks. We have to fulfil our responsibility to ensure that our distribution points are as safe as possible. You know, so we kind of implemented the normal things which um, people back home in Wales would be used to. Social distancing inside the shops, sanitising people's um, hands any time they come into contact with anybody. When people arrive, they will be forced to, um, to wash their hands. They'll be forced to, um, to have their temperature checked. But the arrival of the virus was inevitable and it entered the refugee settlement in Cox's Bazaar in May, with the first death coming at the end of the month. Isolation wards were set up, but not a single ventilator is available, so survival chances are slim. Alex contracted and recovered from the virus. He says COVID just makes an already dire situation worse, with the current monsoon season bringing its own problems. So that has really affected our, um, our work at the moment. We're having to do a lot of rapid response um, as people are dealing with landslides, um, they're dealing with their houses being washed away. It's, um, it's really not easy. The Rohingyas were one of many ethnic minorities in Myanmar or Burma, which faced persecution for generations. Three years ago, deadly attacks by insurgents triggered one of the largest movements of people in recent history. More than 700,000 people fled for their lives to neighbouring Bangladesh. They're all survivors, they're extremely resilient. Um, you know, they're, they're actually surprisingly, um, surprisingly happy as well. You often come across very uh, warming and touching scenes, which um, you perhaps wouldn't expect to, um, to see in a refugee camp. One comfort for the people here has been coronavirus infection and death rates have been low compared to the surrounding region. And the work Alex does here is helping to achieve that. That was Matt Murray reporting there. Football now and Barry Town play in the preliminary qual qualifying round of the Europa League later. The team are in the Faroe Islands for the one-leg tie against NSI Runovic. The winner faces Aberdeen in the next round. And in golf, the European Tour returns to the Celtic Manor in Newport today for the start of the Wales Open. It's the second tournament to be held at the venue this month after Sam Horsfield won the Celtic Classic there on Sunday. It's time to take a look at the weather forecast now and uh, Sabrina, how's it looking? Thanks, Jared. Well, we saw Storm Ellen last night. That did bring some strong winds. Locally, gusts peaked at 71 miles an hour. We are now in somewhat of a quieter slot, still windy along the south and west coast, but another batch of strong winds to come for us all tonight and tomorrow. And that's because the remnants of Storm Ellen will become tucked in with this area of low pressure. That area of low pressure will become deeper and strengthen those winds. And as a, as a result, there are some hazards. Given the strength of the winds and the trees are in full leaf, that means some of the trees could topple. And then we also have some large tides at the moment, together with some large waves, and that could allow for some coastal flooding. At the moment, Natural Resources Wales have issued a series of flood alerts and flood warnings because there could be some issues. Now, coming up through the rest of this afternoon, most places will continue to remain dry with some decent, bright or sunny spells. We have seen some areas of cloud bubble up and a few showers cannot be ruled out. All the while, those winds will continue to strengthen, particularly for western counties, where we could see gusts in excess of 55 miles per hour at times. Then this evening, Evening and overnight, we expect the next batch of rain to spread in. Some spells could be on the heavy and thundery side at times. Those winds strengthening across the country too. At the end of the night, we could see gusts of around 45 miles per hour in Powys, up to about 65 miles per hour in parts of Pembrokeshire. As for tomorrow, we have more in a way of a widespread wind warning in place. For many inland locations, gusts could peak at 45 to 50 miles an hour, closer to 55 to 60 miles an hour for exposed coasts and hills. And looking at the course of the day, then we do expect further blustery showers, sunny spells, and as I've mentioned, some of those winds could cause some issues. And that's the latest forecast. Jared. Thanks very much, Sabrina. That's all from us on the Lunchtime team. Jennifer Jones will be back at 6.30 with the latest from Wales today. Until then, have a good afternoon. Goodbye for now. Hoi la